what? <laughs> what on God's green earth is that? And who told him that that is a good idea, that that looks good? Oh my gosh. How cringe and embarrassing. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Marissa. If you're new here, your favorite problematic housewife, back as always. And today, finally, we're going to be doing the truth about the Dad Challenge podcast. I have been working on this video for a long time. I started off where I was just going to like do a quick video about him and it turned into something where I'm like looking back on his videos, I'm trying to figure things out and I'm trying to form my opinion and I have looked up so much stuff on this guy and his content. So we might have to do this in two parts. I'm not sure. We'll see how far we get today. I can only do so much because I am 39 weeks pregnant. I will be filming when I give birth, so Dad Challenge Podcast, if you're watching this, I am 100% monetizing my birth. Why not? You did it. The fan. It might be a little distracting. I'm sorry. We got to deal with it. I need some airflow. This pregnant mama that has an air conditioner that keeps deciding to malfunction. I don't have any options right now, so hopefully it's not too loud and distracting. I'm going to try to talk over it. So, I have some notes. I have some clips to show you guys, and I'm going to do my best to lay it all out, what I think of this guy. So, if you're interested, please give this video a thumbs up. Make sure you're subscribed. Turn on that notification bell, and we will get right into it. channel but he's more just mommy vloggers and family vloggers he started out with an actual podcast called the dad challenge podcast and they would do like parenting advice and like have talks and stuff like that well it seemed like he transitioned to youtube during the time of the micah stoffer situation now if you don't know about that micah stoffer and her husband james stoffer adopted a child from china People call him H because they don't want to say his um, name anymore. Um, it ended up not working and they actually rehomed him, which is a crazy thought that adopting somebody, a child into your life, that you can rehome them. Like, that sounds really weird. But I wasn't really on YouTube at th that much. Like, I had kind of taken a break off YouTube when all this was going on. So I didn't cover it. I wasn't doing drama videos. But it seems like the Dad Challenge podcast did not like this situation. A lot of people were very angry and very upset at the way the Stoppers handled this. So, um, because uh, Micah Stopper specifically asked for a, like a special needs child. And then they had him for not very long and decided to return him and didn't tell anybody about it. They made a whole bunch of money. They monetized this adoption. People paid for this adoption. So I can understand where the anger is 100%. I get it. We don't know what happens behind the scenes, but I understand how devastating it could be for a child to think you're in your home forever and then all of a sudden somebody's giving you away. I can't imagine what that feels like. And Dad Challenge Podcast is an adoptive dad. He adopted two kids I believe that are his nephews like they're biological like blood relatives to him and he had a personal connection to this case with Micah and James and this is when it seems like he started on this journey of going after mommy vloggers and family vloggers this video might be long and I'm gonna try to condense it as much as I can but there's like I said so much information I'm going to get out what I think is important for this video, and I might do a part two. We will see what happens with this video. I'm going to get into a few things that have me a little bit concerned. But anyway, so let's go back. Let's back it up a little bit. And let's talk about uh, Dad Challenge Podcast days as a pastor, because he uploaded multiple videos talking about him getting fired as a pastor, all the different places that he worked, and it's really interesting 
the way he acts that he that he used to be a pastor. I'm just like I would not put his personality and you know all the perverted jokes and sexual remarks and all this into a pastor. But it makes sense why he's not a pastor anymore. Um, he got fired pretty much from for having too much influence. He thinks he was wrongly fired. We don't ever really know, um, but I do know with his type of personality, I can totally see him influencing people and, you know, if he doesn't believe in something or, um, you know, I can totally see him trying to get the whole crowd on his side, things like that. But we're not going to get too much into that because what I really want to focus on today is his content, okay, uh, and what he's been doing lately that really is just driving me up the wall. As you guys know, he is anti-mommy vlogger, anti-family vlogger. The anti-mommy vlogger movement has gotten completely out of control, in my opinion. There is no reason to demonetize, deplatform, uh, ruin people's sponsorships because you don't like what the kind of content they're doing. And what I don't like about Dad Challenge Podcast is not only is he a commentary channel, He's a commentary channel that's doing it under the guise of saving exploited children. And I don't believe that. And I'm going to tell you why. And I'm going to show you some things in here of why I don't buy that load a crock of shit. I just don't. He is extremely rude, condescending, very sexual to these mommy vloggers. He thinks Micah Stoffer's hot. He is constantly making sexual jokes at them. Um, putting them down, mom shaming, body shaming, look shaming, I mean, you name it. And this is a man here. And I find it extremely concerning that a married man is so obsessed with mommy vloggers. If my husband was sitting on YouTube and kept making mommy vlogger videos and he had like a whole audience full of women, he like Dad Challenge Podcast has these like groupy women that will fight his battles and do anything for him. They even work for him. He has he had one lady who was like shipping out stuff for him. They mod for him. He has them doing all these jobs for like this Dad Challenge Podcast cult, if you will, because it is almost like a cult. And it's all women. He even said himself that only 3% of his audience is men or like other than women so all women watching him which i find very interesting and i think that might be some of what's going to his head a little bit he has like this crowd of women around him that will go protect him and defend him and he says anybody who criticizes him are trolls haters and detractors and the same few people criticize him and i you know what I don't buy that because I hear that about Radiant Brit too. And Radiant Brit is extremely problematic in my opinion. And her, her, her hypocrisy is getting worse and worse as the days go by. And there's only a few people that talk about it. But that doesn't make us any less right. Just because everybody in the world isn't shouting it from the rooftops doesn't mean you aren't trouble, buddy. So let's get back to Micah Stoffer. He started making these stoffer videos and i understand why he did this i get it he's upset everybody was really passionate really outraged and angry about the micah stoffer situation but he took it to that next level he has like a hundred videos on her i'm not even joking you guys and he thinks she's hot it's like he has this like weird hatred for her but also wants to sleep with her at the same time it's very weird um he wanted to take them down he didn't want to just call out their problematic behavior that wasn't good enough okay he had to completely cancel the stoppers make sure they were off youtube okay off youtube and then once he finally got them off youtube which they did it wasn't just because of him there was a lot of backlash from every Body, but he was doing video after video after video and it had nothing to do with children he would react to her doing a house tour and be making fun of her clothes and her body and her makeup and stuff like that that has nothing to do with the situation okay and now I know some people criticize him a lot of people do for the way he delivers his information I my thing is I'm kind of a little bit opposite I don't think if, okay 
here's my standing on this. I don't care if he wants to snark and, you know, do impersonations. Like, I actually was laughing at a couple of the things that he did on his Dad Challenge channel. I must say I prefer that channel much more than the podcast channel. And I'm going to tell you why. He's just doing petty, making fun of people, like, lighthearted, um kind of jokes impersonation to react to like some of their house tours if you want to do all that in my opinion that's fine that's fine if you want to go that route what I'm not okay with is the demonetization the deplatforming ruining people's sponsorships stalking them in real life yes I'm gonna get to that um, that stuff is what I am against now some people are the opposite and they're like well I don't like all the snarky jokes and remarks and blah blah but I understand the cause and what you're doing I don't understand the cause and I don't agree with that yes there are some issues with having kids online we all know this but it's not the fault of the mommy vloggers okay it's not the mommy vloggers fault that there are predators on the internet you can't just wipe out every mommy vlogger and family vlogger out of existence and he says well I don't want to deplatform them I want to demonetize all kids in videos you just put up a video parody about a day in your life or something like that and your kids are in the video are you monetizing that it's not up to you that is the main thing I have here if that's your opinion that kids shouldn't be on the internet great but who are you you have no right to go to brands, to go tell people to leave them bad reviews, to go ruin their sponsorships, to try to get them demonetized. This is their life. This is how they built a business and a career for themselves. And this is what they choose to do. The kids are not in danger. They are living a great life, most of them. Now there are the few problematic ones here and there. I understand that. These kids are living a better life than most people can only dream of. It is not up to you who the hell died and made you king of exploited children, okay? You're not out there saving kids who are being, you know, enslaved and trafficked and kidnapped and missing and exploited kids. No, you don't want to. You're not interested in taking this off of YouTube and actually making a difference. All you care about is taking down mommy vloggers and family vloggers and it's so stupid. Mommy vloggers and family vloggers and those children are the least problematic on the internet. Like, I don't understand why you think these kids are in some kind of danger. Here's another thing really quick to think about, you guys. People will say that celebrity children, it's okay because there's laws in place. Well, why isn't Dad Challenge Podcast or anybody else who's for this cause working to get laws for YouTube kids? Instead of trying to deplatform and demonetize everybody and ruin everybody's career, why isn't he fighting to get better protections in place? You know, write to senators, do all these different things he can do, but he chooses to get on his platform and just make fun of moms and harass them and bully them until they literally leave YouTube. That's his answer, to get all kids and moms off of YouTube instead of trying to fight to put protections in place, which I have heard other countries are starting to do things like that, but that's not his goal. His goal is not to protect the children and get protections in place for YouTube kids. He hates mommy vloggers and family vloggers. He's jealous and bitter, and he's not gonna be happy until they are all run off the internet. I'm telling you right now. And on top of that, the parents are not gonna listen to you when you're sitting there telling everybody they're bad parents. Nobody is gonna have their eyes and their ears and their minds open to hearing what you have to say. Because when you are a parent, you are very defensive of your kids and of your parenting. And when somebody comes and tries to tell you, you're a bad parent, you're putting your kids in danger, you're not going to want to listen to that, okay? So he's doing these videos on Mike Astolfer. They finally get off the internet. Like, people pushed them away. They seriously got canceled. Like, they're for real canceled, not just pretend canceled. They're canceled. Um, but that's not good enough because James, the husband, you know, who they still have four children, remember, these people still have kids.
that they have to feed and when they've been living a certain way and then all of a sudden you expect them to just drop all their income and what, have no work, go out into the workforce, you don't take any of that into consideration and it's so ridiculous. So, Stauffer Garage or something like that. There's a car, the husband does car detailing. Now there's this old drama with that channel and him copying other car things, whatever, whatever. I don't know, I'm not really interested in that story. But I find, what I find interesting is Dad Challenge Podcast was not happy. He does not want anyone subscribing to their channel. He wants to demonetize it. He wants that platform gone. And I find it very interesting that he also has a car detailing channel. Tell me that there's no bias there. There's no ulterior motives there. Get your car dealing detailing competition off the internet, right? So that you can have more room for yours, which is not doing as well as stuff or garages. It's just so stupid. And I am so sick of people pretending like they're all about the kids. Because when you start arguing with people in the comments and in this and that, their argument changes every five seconds. First, it's like, oh, we're exploiting kids. Um, kids are not safe, blah, blah, blah. And then it's like, okay, well, what do you mean? That's not up to you. That's up to the parents. You can't tell someone their kids are exploited. You are not their parents. Then they switch it to, oh, but what about the predators? So you're pretty much using the thing like the girl who wore a short skirt and got sexually assaulted. It was her fault because she had a short skirt. That is the exact argument you guys are using. Because these people put their kids on the internet, it's their fault because of the predators. That is what you are saying. It is not fair to expect every single parent on the planet to not have their kids on social media because there's weirdos and creeps out there. Get over it. Get over it. If you think your child is not safe or you feel like there's a predator lurking around or watching your kid, that is up to them to take them out of that situation, take them off the internet. It is not up to Sloan or Dad Challenge Podcast or Radiant Brit to demand people take their kids off social media immediately. It's never going to happen. And you cannot bully people into doing it. What is that so hard to understand? Now, let's get into my next thing that Dad Challenge Podcast does. Copyright striking um, and trying to take down other YouTubers. Oh yeah. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're talking about Josh from the Dad Challenge Podcast again that Josh copyright claimed two of my videos. I've been keeping a secret. I've been keeping this secret to protect my channel. He struck my channel and I have not said that. I've never said that he struck my channel because I've always been told if you get a strike, don't tell anybody, just be quiet about it. So I did. I was keeping that private until I read a comment that he made on another commentary channel. That's a lie. Every time he lies about me, I will call him out because guys, he lies. Especially when it comes to me for some reason, he lies. He left this comment on a, another commentary channel. He said, didn't strike claimed. These two are different things and I've talked about it at length and I'd do it again to a no-face cartoon who's obsessed with me. So he's lying. He didn't copyright claim my videos. He struck my channel, and I'm gonna show you proof right now. So this is a screenshot of my computer, you know, where it shows my copyright strikes. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit so you guys can get a better view, but I did blur out the date that he struck me and the date that the strike will expire for my own protection. Here you go, he struck my channel. And he's right, copyright claiming a video and striking a channel are two completely different things. He copyright striked BXB's boy, he copyright striked YouTuber headlines, okay? Him and YouTuber, um, um, him and Sloan threatened YouTuber headlines, okay, to dox her and put her personal information out there if she didn't stop making videos. And Dad Challenge Podcast lied and said he did a copyright claim, not a strike. You did a strike, she showed the proof on her channel, you struck her channel down, and then you used the excuse that she made your wife feel creepy or she creeped out your wife. I don't buy that. I don't buy that for one second. Anybody who gets anywhere criticizing you and showing people the truth about you, you tear them to the ground, you try to remove them, and that is your M.O. 
removing, demonetizing, deplatforming, harassing, and stalking people until they do what you want. It's ridiculous. You went to creep show art to take down this lady Camellia, okay, because you didn't like what she was saying. But it backfired on you, and Creepshow Art ended up doing a video on your ass. There are so many people who are awake to what the Dad Challenge podcast is all about, okay? Besides his group and Stan army, okay, of people that think he's so great and saving the children, we are on to you. There is a lot of people on to you, okay? And you are not... Saving exploited kids, okay? You hate mommy vloggers. You hate family vloggers. You are obsessed. Little does some people know you are a failed mommy vlogger, family vlogger, I will say. You filmed your own wife's birth. You used to do family vlogs. Your name is Dad Challenge Podcast. Like, you were trying to be a family vlogger. Let's face it, buddy. And it didn't work out for you. Then you realized with the Micah Stopper situation that you were blowing up and that was your calling, calling out all these family vloggers because guess what? All these people who follow you, who claim it's just for the kids, it's not. They hate the mommy vloggers. They're extremely jealous and bitter and salty. You can tell because when you argue with these people in comments, it always ends. The conversation always turns from being about the children to oh well they're entitled they're they act like they're rich they overspend they're annoying blah 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 you have attracted all the haters on youtube and you guys are prancing around pretending it's for the children using your fake analytics which you admitted yourself i find it extremely sus that social book, this place you use your analytics, had asked you at one point to stop showing their, like, stats. Touch on social book. Social book wrote me an email and said, please don't use our analytics on your website anymore, on your channel anymore. We've been getting a lot of calls. We don't want to call our lawyer on you. So I'm actually hopefully going to go look to talk to a lawyer soon to see if what I'm doing is um, going against their terms of service. And I don't think it is. Showing people's analytics. Um... I don't see how I'm harassing them with that. And so you'll see in the email, uh, or you'll see what he's saying is that I'm, I'm tearing them down. And so look, if you're, if you're analytics, and so maybe they are, they've got a little bit of a point. So I've already made my analytics argument with this. And so does Kendall and everybody else. They look at their analytics in the back end and say, this, he's wrong. He's wrong because my analytics don't show what he's showing. And they're right. Just wanted to make it clear. This is in regards to the demographics of people who watch these family vloggers because he is claiming that it's all men. And he gets his stats from Social Book, which he is just explaining now are not the same stats that a YouTuber gets for their own channel. So they're accurate how? The analytics from Social Book, and they've been clear on this, are not the backend analytics that the creators see in their backend. Those are, unex those are unattainable, except for the people who own the analytics of the channels. You cannot get the, the creator's analytics. It's impossible, okay? It just doesn't exist, and it's smart the way YouTube does that, because, well, that's data that should be you know, held close to your heart because that's how you make your money. Your analytics make you money. When it's if they're so accurate, why do they care if you put them in a video? You also said yourself that these stats are not the same as the ones a YouTuber gets, which is the actual accurate demographics and stats about who their audience is. I would go by what YouTube gives me personally for my channel. I'm not going to listen to some stupid analytics that you got from a third party. Are you kidding me? You even said yourself, you literally said yourself that it's not the same. So why would anybody believe your damn stats? <sighs> anyway, also, you have to take into account kids using their parents' accounts, which happens all the time. You don't know who these people are who just say, oh, they're male, blah, blah, blah. It could be troll accounts. People say they're male, this and that, when they make a Google Gmail and then open YouTube. You don't know who these people actually are. They could be children using their parents' accounts. They could be the wife using their husband's account, which I've been on my husband's account before. You just don't know, okay? So you can't sit around and tell everybody they're weirdos and predators and stalking their children. Is that a problem? Yes, I do understand that. But you can't bully people into doing what you want. You just said yourself, I'm going to show you guys a clip. And again, you're going to throw out words like harassment and bullying. They, they use these words because they're the buzzwords of the day, the harassment and bullying. But in the end, 
where I stand on that, when I, when my rebuttal to that is, then stop exploiting children if you don't want to be called out and made fun of. If you're on the internet, okay, and you want to make a living off of YouTube, this is going to happen. People are going to make videos about you, like Shannon has done about me, and I've done about her and others, okay? You get to enjoy the absolute decadence of wealth by putting, turning a camera on and ex exploiting your children to make money. Expect it. This is part and parcel, okay? You are going to be, if you're going to put your life out there for people to pick apart and watch and enjoy, and your kids to be picked apart and to watch and enjoy, and maybe possibly have Pluto's look at them and stuff, this is, again, this is part and parcel. It is way... I find it really funny that he just says there, people need to accept it and get over it when I'm about to show you his sad clip with his cat in the beginning of the video and his sweater and what he said about getting hate. You guys just want to sit here and watch me get snuggled by Sam? He's got a ball back here. So if you hear like a jingling like Christmas bells, it's because he's playing with a ball. And you know what? If Sam wants to play with a ball, Sam gets to play with a ball because Sam is the king of the castle. I do what Sam tells me to do. Sam is the man. And he's a little older, so when I see him playing, it actually warms the cold, dead recesses of my heart because he still plays and he's still the man. I'm so allergic to cats, not even funny. <laughs> it is more of a serious video today. I've been reading comments. I've been trying to understand better what I can do here better. Uh, you know, it's, it's not an easy thing as a creator to, to look at when people leave comments, I read them all. And we're going to talk about that a little bit more today about how that can be really, really detrimental to read all the comments in a, a comment section of a YouTube video. Because it's full of people who either support you or hate you with no reason and lie. It's crazy how much people are invested in tearing other people down, right? And you could argue that that's what I'm doing to Mike and James and family vloggers. Sure, but they deserve it. For necessary evils have to take place in order for changes to make, to happen. I right? was really considering it. After that video and starting to um, read comments and then watching again and realizing, shit, man, I'm bombarded with hate and all this stuff. And then all these videos dropped about me, Creep Show and Camellia and the YouTuber headlines and all these people and Bird and all that stuff. While I'm on vacation for three days, like it all came down in the same day. It definitely, this world of hate can be, can be very, very detrimental to your mental health is all I'm going to say. So people who come on and say, oh, I love the hate comments and all that stuff. Like, you, know, you know what? You lose sleep over that shit. You really do. Like, and I'm not talking about when I'm on vacation with my family. I haven't had anxiety for years. Okay, I used to. I was diagnosed with general anxiety disorder when I was 30 years old. When I went to tour with my band, and I was like full blown anxiety oh. this past weekend, like I did 10 years ago, when I was basically cured of this. Um, and so that to me is a huge indicator that this stuff affects you on a really, really personal level. Hate that you get the comments, the people accusing me of R, people accusing me of murder, uh, people just spouting lies in comment sections. It does hurt you, and they do it on purpose, and they know it hurts you. To ignore that it hurts you is such a lie. And so when you receive a ton of hate and videos coming at you for perceived shit that is like lies, basically un badly researched terrible videos, it hurts, right? When I do this stuff, I want you guys to know that the hate really hurts. Remember, he's like, did I copyright strike YouTuber headlines? No. I copyright claimed YouTuber headlines. There's a big difference between the two, okay? If you're going to use my content, go for it. I'm not going to copyright strike Creepshow art for using my stuff on their channel. I'm not going to do it. Here's why I'm not going to. And here's what creeps me about, about YouTube headlines. And here's this. She wants to know the answer to YouTube headlines. Here's a couple answers for you. And I did a whole video on Rumble on this. But I'm going to tell you right now. When someone does 11 videos about you, and it's not lost on me that I've done, you know, 55 videos about Mike and James, okay? When someone does 11 videos ab about you, and all the videos are just the most fickle excuse for videos, to be honest with you, nothing there. They're nothing burgers. At least when I'm going after Mike and James, that's not a nothing burger. What they did was heinous. Hey, buddy. Like, her videos were so fickle. Like, they were so poorly done, and she's not good at what she does. And so when she does a lot of those videos and then in the comment section of videos, when someone leaves a comment and it's vitriolic or it's hateful or whatever, and you like that comment with a heart and often comment on it, to me, that's you saying that thing. In her comments, someone made a disparaging remark about my wife, actually multiple comments um, about my wife, okay? And y'all know me, don't come after my wife. It's not gonna be good for you. And when you leave a heart on that comment or comment on that comment, to me, you are, you are propping that comment up. So when someone makes fun of my wife and then you like that comment, you made fun of my wife. So, sorry. Just wanted to throw this in here, too, since it was in the same video. You guys are seeing this, right? He justified a copyright strike because somebody made a mean comment about his wife. And YouTuber Headlines hearted it. He makes mean comments about everybody's fucking wife. And mommy vlogger and family vlogger. You've got to be kidding me with this guy. Are you, are you insane? Are you insane? Okay, let's get back to what he was saying about the mommy vloggers and justifying what he does. Sending his followers to attack all of these innocent moms that he's making out to be these horrible people. When Let me stop you there. They're not innocent. Again, we're going to rebut everything she says because it's important to say this. When you exploit your children on YouTube for money, you're not innocent, right? That's... That's always been my stance. Ever once in any video, and if you can provide proof, I'd love to see it. Now, I did a video on Asa, on Asa Moss where I still leave an honest review about his company, um, about who he is. And I, it, this is why.
why it's really hard to catch this guy because he makes so many videos and his lies after lies. I just showed you a clip where he said he had people going to Florida. He does go after people. He's lying. It's, it, maybe that's what she's talking about, but I never have ever advocated for anybody to ever go after anybody, even when I was having beef with other people. Never, ever, ever, and my mods put it in the chat and everything else, never advocated for it. And you never should. I would like to not be attacked, but nobody should ever attack these people that I'm talking about. And if you're an adult and you're gonna go attack people, then, I mean, that you're an adult, you can do what you want, but I'm never gonna advocate for it. Never gonna advocate for doxing, you should never do that kind of stuff. But she's just saying, people send people to attack, I've never ever done that. And if you can send me a message or a receipt or someone where I've messaged someone and said, go attack people, I'd love to see it because it's never gonna happen. I'm never gonna do it, never will. About her. If she makes another video, this is your warning, YouTuber Headlines, if you make another video, I will make more videos, and I will work with Josh, and I will find out your personal information, and I will put it out there, because... But at the same time, I'm going to have to have an honest conversation with that family vlogger and say, you know, I'm happy to stop talking about you. Are you going to stop exploiting your children? Right? There's a, there's a two-way conversation here. Because if in the end you're going to, if you're going to weaponize the idea that, like, if you don't say it, I'm going to commit suicide, that's never going to be on me. Stop exploiting your f***ing children, then. If you don't want me doing videos about you, stop doing stupid shit. Because my mission here is clear. I don't do it for, for willy-nilly, I don't do it out of the blue. All the people that I do on this channel, where I cover them, they do this, they exploit. Moms. Moms are my kink. I love stay-at-home moms, they're hot. I love moms. Moms are amazing, women are beautiful, incredible. But you know who doesn't deserve my respect, or me to treat them with respect or kindness? Are people who exploit their children. Let's just land there. Stop just saying moms. Because there are tons of amazing moms out there, okay? Stop saying that, because that's disingenuous and you're lying. It's always been my thing, because I was abused when I was a child. The reason why I do this is because of my childhood. The reason I, I stand up for kids who don't have voices is because I was that child. I understand that you were abused, but that doesn't mean every child of a mommy vlogger and family vlogger is being abused. You cannot use that as an excuse to go after people because they are not being abused. That he thinks whatever he does is justified because they exploit their children. And he even went as far to say as these people aren't human. Like what? Who the hell are you? Like, that's what I keep getting back to. You don't have a right. If you're worried about children, if you're worried about this and that, whatever, make your videos, make fun of them. If you just don't like the vloggers, that's fine. Make your drama videos, make fun of them. I don't like the sexual stuff, okay? Cut the creepy weirdo stuff out, which I'm gonna get to that in a minute. But don't be trying to deplatform, demonetize, and take people out. Poor Tara Henderson finally had enough of all the backlash from you and your stands. She decided to take her kids off YouTube, but was that good enough? No, no. People are telling her she's got to take them off Instagram. Yeah, because they don't like her. Okay, they don't like her. People are saying, oh, mommy vloggers are not offering anything to the world. They're entitled, they're selfish, they're arrogant, they're big ego. All they do is sell things. Mm, to me, that doesn't sound like it's the children, but that's what they say. And then they're like, oh, but we're, we're just about saving the kids. Give me a break. I'm going to have to make this a part two, I think, and I'm going to try to, like, get this wrapped up. But, okay, let's move on to the next thing. So, let's just go over. We talked about how he copy strike strikes other YouTubers. Um, Micah Stoffer, another thing I wanted to show you. He had somebody tell him Micah Stauffer was pregnant. He announced, now I understand how people feel about Micah Stauffer, but you don't announce another woman's pregnancy on your YouTube channel when she is not even on YouTube anymore. That is disgusting. And guess how he found out she was pregnant? He said people in real life saw her belly, so they're following her around in real life and reporting back to Dad Challenge Podcast. That's what he does. This is taking things into real life, and that is not right. That is scary, and that is harassment. You cannot have people watching somebody who left YouTube and is not a public figure at this point, watching them and looking at their belly and looking at if they're pregnant or not and reporting it back to you for you to report to you. That is extremely creepy. You guys, you cannot think that that's not weird, no matter who it is. Take out of your mind for a second who the person is, and just in general, nobody should be stalking people in real life and reporting it back to Dad Challenge Podcast. And he absolutely takes this stuff to real life. I'm going to show you right now where he's um, threatening to dox YouTuber headlines, okay? He's upset about H. 
the person who has H now, he's stalking them on Instagram and said he's been blocked multiple times. How do you get blocked more than once? I don't know. Do you have troll accounts? Are you harassing this lady? He found who has H. He found their social media and he, the person is posting pictures of him on Instagram. Not as a vlogger or a social media personality or anything. Just as a regular person. Everybody posts pics of their kids on Instagram. And Dad Challenge Podcast followed and stalked this lady's Instagram who was nice enough and caring enough to take in this child and take care of him after the horrors he went through at the Stoffer's house, okay? The horrors that child had to go through. Now he's with somebody else in great care. She's posting pictures of him probably happy and thriving on social media, which is nothing wrong with that. And he's bothering her enough where she blocked him. And then what? He makes another account and goes back and tells her again. He threatens her and said, oh, you know, the people who care about H... You know, don't let them come after you. They're going to come after you. He always does these veiled threats like this. And he's very intimidating and manipulating. And he makes it sound like he has people out in the world who will come get you if you don't listen to him. He's like this weird cult mob boss of the mommy vlogger, anti-mommy vlogger thing. It's really creepy. He's really uncomfortable youtuber headlines doesn't even talk about him anymore after what he did to her he copyright striked her just so he could get her information and threatened to leak her personal information and she doesn't even show her face who she is nothing and he said if you don't stop making videos okay him and sloan are gonna work together and tell everybody who you are he even went as far as accusing him of being another person named samantha oakley or something crazy like that, who it wasn't, so he doxxed a random person to try to take down YouTuber headlines, okay? I'm just so, it's just getting to be out of control. You cannot take this to real life. Take a look at this. And I'm gonna release it today. It's, I mean, you're likely you're gonna guess. Pregos, pregnant. I've heard about this a little while ago and I was just waiting to kind of see if, oh man, I need this first, boom. Yes, yeah, so um, Micah is pregnant, 100%. I don't know why they were in Boston though, but the people that saw them in Boston, just saying, people have seen them and have seen bumps, if you know what I mean. Then I was reaching out to my other people in Ohio, confirmed, pregnant. The person who has H right now, I keep reaching out to her on Instagram because she's using him on her Instagram and I'm like, please don't, and she keeps blocking me, which, I almost, like, I get it, but at the same time, lady, I know you're probably watching this stuff. Stop putting H on the internet. Stop doing it. Why is it that H always falls into this a family of people of narcissists who want to Instagram everything? Stop it. Especially if you foster and adopt, stop putting these kids on the internet. Stop it. Again, this lady, you know what H came from. You know what happened to that kid. Why would you keep putting him on the internet? So that's, I'm going to leave it there. I'm not going to tell you who it is. I'm not going to tell you where to go. But I'm pissed because she keeps ignoring me. And I wasn't rude to her. I just said, hey, look, just so you're aware, you know what H came from. Can you please, please, please find it in your heart not to put him on your channel? Please. And she just, she just blocks me. So trust me, this lady. You don't want the people who are for H to come after you to be doing stupid stuff. Like H, this, this thing stirred so many people and stirred compassion in people, stirred anger in people. Why would you con consistently put him back on the internet? It doesn't make sense. So, and used for money that... And I don't think that person is doing it for money, clearly, but they have a lot of followers. So. If she makes another video, this is your warning, YouTuber headlines. If you make another video, I will make more videos, and I will work with Josh, and I will find out your personal information, and I will put it out there because... To this is what's going on in the selfie world. You are now complicit in the idea of exploiting a child. Everybody needs to go leave honest reviews to Selfie World. All over, all of them. I don't care if it's just Jacksonville, all the Selfie Worlds. Selfie World now is complicit. And that's what I'm saying here. I'm saying it. Laying the gauntlet down. Selfie World, you need to do more research with who you're working with. Because I talk about it all the time. Um, but, you know, because we, we deal with a lot. I mean, like a lot. Like, do like, you? You brought it on yourself. You didn't pull a permit and they called... <gasps> really? The city on us? Well, then maybe you should hire a licensed electrician who's going to do it right. And then not put it on the blog who he was. How did the people know who he was? So you made a guy, it basically you caused the guy, electrician, to lose his license. Um, that didn't affect us, affect the electrician. Yeah, it didn't affect you. But that electrician should sue the shit out of you. That's what we get all day long. Constant. Constant. Um, from people. Why is your number on the internet? And, Change your number. And the most recent one, this is what I'm talking about, but uh, that's why I brought this up. The most recent one is now we're getting one star reviews on our business um, from people that have never been to our business. Again, we talked about this. I'll just say again. Okay. You can leave... A review, a detailed, honest review about the business owners who own the business, because that's important too. 
This place has a, you are the face of now, Selfie World Jacksonville. And so they are able to say, hey, these people are not good people. So please try to avoid this business at all costs because that is allowing them to perpetuate this bad behavior. You know, people are going to come regardless no matter what. This is him being all cocky. You know what? You guys don't affect us, but people are going to come anyway. Oh, I've got some people coming. They're coming there. I've got people in Jacksonville. They're coming. Want to make sure that that happens? Oh, so you tell people to leave one-star reviews. Your fans are harassing these people. And you are a weirdo and literally just said you have people going there where they were. But you don't stalk, harass, and bully. Okay, creepo. Okay, creepo. Look at this face. Tell me that's not a freaking creep. This is getting crazy. Like, you cannot threaten people and say, you better watch out. If you don't do the people who like him are going to come after you. I'm going to release your personal information. Okay, he also threatened and told people to go to another channel's business in real life. This is, he is constantly taking this stuff to the real life. And he said, go to their business, leave bad reviews, tell them what you think about these people, blah, blah, blah. Like, what? You can't do that. These are people's businesses. And I just realized my toilet was over there. I'm going to move this a little bit. These are people's businesses. Like, oh yeah, versus talking shit's toilet behind her just sitting there. This is his reasoning. His reasoning is because you exploit your children, he can do whatever he wants. He literally said that. And he said, if you can't take the hate, get off the internet. But when he gets hate, I'm going to show you guys what he does. He's in a sweater, petting his cat talking about how the hate just gets to him so much and he almost left YouTube. But the mommy vloggers who you're making fun of constantly talking sexual about, they have to buck up and take your criticism and all they have to do is take their kids off the internet and you'll stop. So now you're blackmailing people to get your way, which is not okay. You cannot tell people that is blackmail. Do what I want and I will stop. If you don't, I'm going to keep making videos on you. You can't do that. YouTube is not for, your whole entire channel is about deplatforming and demonetizing people. How you get away with this on YouTube, I have no idea. I really don't. You, you can't just make a YouTube channel just to take people down. It's not right. I don't care. It is up to the parents what they do with their child for the hundredth time. I don't care what your opinion on mommy vloggers is. You don't have a right to take away their sponsorships and their businesses and their advertisements and their, like, their whole life and paycheck. You don't have a right to do that, especially when you're monetizing these people. You make money off them and their children. You make money off those families. That's okay, though. That's okay. Unreal. Why don't we take a look at what he loves to say about mommy vloggers because he talks extremely sexual about them and it's very creepy, it's very strange and I can't believe a married man talks about other women like this. I would kill my husband if he said some of the things he said. Now, there was a few clips that I wasn't able to put in like when he told Tara Henderson she had a flat ass when she was dancing in Vegas. He ended up deleting that video because Tara Henderson took her kids off the internet. So there's with the blackmail again. Oh, I'll remove your two videos if you take your kids off the internet and do what I say. And if you don't, I'm going to bully and harass you and make video after video after video until you do what I want. Let's take a look at how he respects women. Let's keep going. I'm on the floor and talking and see my unblended makeup. It's going to be so good. My eyebrows are like two giant caterpillars fighting for the honor of their families. It probably smells like your vagina. Like I said, this is just a clean. And this one smells like, why does it smell? What? No, wants, nobody wants vagina cleaner smell. Scent. That's Love Mess vagina. Why did you, what? Why? Welcome, Love Me. You're welcome. So now that I've gotten some laundry going and I Holy blend your shit, lady. Even I know that. I know nothing about makeup. It looks like you walked into a fire pit. And we're like, Poof. isn't, is that a thing? Am I, I feel like it's a bit much to put that much makeup on to do laundry in your underwear. Like I just, 
It's a bit much. It changed. Are we going to see the vagina spray? <laughs> I'm sorry. I, can't, I will never not ever think that that spray smells like a vaginal. It's just in here forever. It is never leaving. And it's never leaving your way. You're welcome. Here today because... How long is this? Love match. Chill with the shirt. Put some pants on. Practice makes perfect, you know. Uh, you didn't... Thanks. The feet again. I'm telling you. This is for the feet fetish guys that watch these videos. Nasty. Your feet are gross. I'm sorry. Nobody's feet are hot. Bree's bits are sitting there in that really short skirt. She's likely... I haven't heard things about Micah that I'm not even sure I'm allowed to tell you about her past. Things that she has told people that I'm like <gasps> aghast, right? And they're like, you know, not su super surprising, but like sexual things. And that is only a few, a few, a very small amount of clips. Literally every video about one of these mommy vloggers has sexual jokes, perverted remarks. It's disgusting. And for somebody who used to be a man of Christ, a man of God, a pastor, this is how you talk about women. No wonder why you're not a freaking pastor anymore because you have a serious problem with perversion. Okay. Now, another thing I want to get into. One of the things that made me just so disgusted and thought it was one of the most inappropriate things I have ever seen. Okay, everybody's familiar with Danielle Kahn. She's a 14 year old Instagram influencer who's very provocative. There's a lot of controversy around her, whether her parents are making her do things. And this is what he decides to do, okay? Because he's all, he's all about not exploiting kids and saving the children. He puts him and his teenage son on camera. I'm gonna show you the freaking clips of how gross this is. Who's 18 years old. He's sitting there having him and his son look at a 13 year old girl at the time she was 13 in some of the pictures he was showing. And he's showing this to his 18 year old son and asking him what he thinks. Asking him, wow, well, look, look at her in this bikini. Look at her in this lingerie. What do you think about her reputation? And people in the comments like Radiant Brit and others are, are all okay with this? Are you guys sick in the head? You want to call people weirdos for watching mommy vloggers? And you're going to sit there and watch Dad Challenge podcast? Look at a 13-year-old girl on Instagram with his teenage son? on camera and critique what she's wearing and talk about her social media and shame her and blame the mother and say all this nasty stuff. What? That is extremely inappropriate. And when I asked my husband, I was like, isn't this, he was like, what? I was shocked that he had this video up on YouTube and nobody has said anything about it. Take a look at this. Hey everybody, welcome to the Dad Challenge Podcast. My name's Josh and this is my son. What's your name? Tyson. Yeah, sorry. His name is Tyson. Today we're talking about um, the Daniel Cohn story. We're going to keep di diving in a little bit deeper and, you know, dressing like that. So Tyson, you've seen the Instagram. Let's open it up. Have you seen the Instagram? I, you, you showed other people and I was going to go look at okay. it. Okay, I'm going to show it to you. It. I want your first impression of her Instagram, okay? It's from, from a dude who's a teenager who understands this world. Okay, so in your first impression, because you already know her age because I told you, but your first impressions of, let me find one that's not super disgusting. How old does she look like to you? How old does she look? Go through. Definitely not 13. Right? And probably, in, in, we don't even know. If you go farther back in her Instagram, she could be 12 or even 11 as far as some people are concerned, right? So, Tyson, like, what does that show you? Like, is that a normal thing? Like, do you see, like, look at this. She's wearing lingerie. She's 13. She's wearing lingerie. Okay. The lingerie, lingerie is a little sus. Something like that. A 13-year-old girl should not see? be dressing like this. I mean, that's just a bathing suit. A j Dude, it's made of elastics. There's, like, almost nothing there. Okay, it's really messing with my mind because you keep saying she's 13. It's really messing with his mind that his dad keeps saying she's 13. If this is not demented, I don't know what is. He's messing with his own kid's head showing a 13-year-old in lingerie on his channel. This man is disgusting. Am I in some kind of alternate universe here where nobody thinks that's disgusting? First of all, why are you having your 18-year-old son look at a minor's Instagram page on camera and asking him what he thinks? Oh, she's wearing lingerie. Like, what? I was just astonished 
that he did this and it's disgusting and I really think he needs to take a step back and look at what he's doing because he literally at this point will do anything. He will do anything for his videos, for his content, to make people do what he wants, even go as far as bring his own child into it. How That's just sick and demented to do something like that and extremely inappropriate. That is disgusting. Why would you make your son look at a 13-year-old girl's body on Instagram for the world to see him doing that? You are sick. I wonder sometimes what is going on in your head, Dad Challenge Podcast, that makes you come up with these weird, twisted ideas. You're, you're disgusting. You're a freaking pervert. You're obsessed with these mommy vloggers. You're dragging your kids into your weirdness. You need to chill out. And anybody who supports that kind of behavior, I'm sorry, I don't agree with that. There's a ton of stuff on the internet. Everybody can make up their mind for themselves. I'm not saying don't ever watch him again. Don't ever do this. But hold him accountable for the disgusting things that he's doing. It's not right. And at the same time, he's doing these weird stuff. He's trying to remove people from YouTube and ruin their careers. This guy is won't stop. He's literally the psychotic, perverted vigilante of YouTube who has made it his life's mission to take down mommy vloggers that don't deserve to be treated this way. Put aside your feelings about whatever mommy vlogger that you hate and look at right and wrong here. This is not the way to do it. And Radiant Brit backing him up, she's a piece of shit too. How are you going to be under comments like that, Radiant Brit? How are you going to be co-signing a video like that of somebody making a, their kid look at a teenage girl's Instagram on camera? It's disgusting. You need your head examined. You do. Don't be going here calling people weirdos for watching other people's children when you're watching people's kids on TikTok and you're co-signing Dad Challenge podcast over here looking at a 13-year-old girl's Instagram. You guys are all tapped in the damn head if you think that's normal. I gotta come down, you guys. I gotta come down. I'm trying my best here to keep it together. <laughs> I'm trying my best here to keep it together. But, let's just wrap this up, okay? I'm gonna have to do another video. I'm getting tired. This is getting long. Let's bring it all together, okay? All together. The sexualizing of the mommy vloggers, bringing his teenage son into it, sexualizing a 13-year-old girl, demonetizing, deplatforming, stalking people, having people report back to him in real life, threatening them. You don't think that's going to intimidate people when you're threatening to go send people there? When he left the bad review, when he was telling people to leave bad reviews to these people, he said he had people going there to see them in Jacksonville. He is very threatening, and it's all in the name of exploited children. So he literally said he can do whatever he wants. And any of you who put up with that and co-sign this behavior and are allowing him to get away with it, shame on you. And I'm going to say it right now. Shame on you. These mommy vloggers, 90% of them are not doing anything but filming their kids monetizing their birth like what is how is that exploiting children tell me you guys have such a problem with showing people's birth the child isn't even born we can do as women what we want with our bodies correct for the people in the back isn't that what we spout nowadays women have a right to their own body well guess what if a woman can do only fans and make money on it a woman can monetize her damn birth because guess what? She's the one pushing that baby out or getting a C-section or walking around pregnant for nine months. So if she wants to share her journey with other mothers, there is nothing wrong with that. And if you have a problem with it, you can seriously suck a fat one. Because that is not right for you to tell a pregnant mother that she cannot make videos about her pregnancy, make fun of her for doing a YouTube video about her pregnancy and say she's you know, exploiting her pregnancy for views and blah, blah. Who the fuck are you to tell a woman what to do with her pregnant body? 
Brit. Huh? Dad Challenge Podcast. Are you going around telling women not to monetize the, their bodies on OnlyFans? Dad Challenge Podcast probably subscribed to OnlyFans. The pervert he is. He's probably watching freaking OnlyFans every day in the bathroom while he's taking a shit. If a woman wants to share her journey of pregnancy, that is her right. And none of you have any right to take that away from her. You don't. As a mom who's pregnant now for the fourth time, it is my right if I want to share my pregnancy journey with people. And if I happen to put ads on those videos, that is my decision, not yours. Who are you to demonetize and deplatform any mother, any mother who's making videos, taking care of her children, providing amazing life for her kids? You have no right to try to take that away from her. And anybody who supports that, you are anti-women. Anti-women. Copyright striking YouTubers, that's another one. So we went over a lot of problems with the Dad Challenge podcast today. Please let me know what you think. This is going to be a heated video, a heated, a lot of tension. The comments are probably going to go wild. But I really feel like I need to bring this to you guys and show you this is not right. These women should not be treated like this. They should not be harassed just because you don't like them or because they're rich or because they're showing their bodies. That is their decision, okay? Everybody has a right to choose what they do with their children and their body as a mother. And nobody can take that away. And a man and a woman with no children especially has no right to tell a woman what to do with her body during pregnancy. I'm sorry, that's not a knock if you don't want to have kids. It's just, I'm saying, do whatever you want. It's your body. And that's what everybody preaches nowadays, right? Women can do what they want with their bodies. But guess what? When they do, they get trashed for it. Tr completely trashed. And I'm sick of it. I'm sick of the mom bashing, the teen mom bashing, the mommy vlogger bashing. It's not right. It's not right. And you need to look inside yourself and wonder why you hate these mothers so much. When all they're doing is, you know, doing sponsorships and living their best life. They're living their best life on YouTube, taking their family along for the journey. A lot of their husbands are able to quit their jobs because of how successful they've become. And that's People should be proud of that. That's inspiring. How wonderful would it be if your husband gets to quit his job and stay home all the time with your family because you're providing this amazing life and sharing it on YouTube at the same time. And the funny thing is we can all do it. Everybody can have that. Everybody. There's no need to be hating and salty. Anybody can do it. So why don't you look at it as inspiring? Just fam, a teen mom who started out a teen mother who could have gone down a very bad path, a very hard road being a teen mother, made a life for herself and her kids, and she lives great. Does she have her issues? Yes. But she created a life for her and her children that a lot of people would never be able to do or never would do being a teen mother. And that should be praised, not shamed. So please make sure you give this video a thumbs up. Please share it around. We need to get the word out. We need to spread awareness to stop this anti-mommy vlogger like freaking problem we have lately. It's getting out of control. Pretty soon it's going to be just as bad as the anti-Katie Joy community. And you saw what happened with that. We can't let it get that far. Please just be open to hearing what I'm saying. If you don't like mommy vloggers, just don't watch them. Just don't watch them. We don't need to take things this far. I hope you enjoyed this video. There will probably be a part two. We will see what the response is to this video. And I tried my best to get as much information as I could, do as much research as I could. Obviously, there may be things I get wrong. There may be things that I messed up, but I'm doing the best I can, especially nine months pregnant and I literally am days away from having a baby. <laughs> okay. Thank you guys so much for watching. I love you all. As always, thank you so much for the support and the subscribes. Make sure you subscribe to Bambi. She's been doing some good content lately. I'll link her down below. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye, guys. Try to hide it. Could you hide me from the get-go?